Hi friends, welcome. Uh, this video is the second half of a day of protests that happened in Salt Lake City. Uh, and this half of the day, we had a destroyed police car, we had windows being smashed, we had some looting, uh, we had a guy with a bow and arrow. Uh, I also got hit by a rock. I survived. It got pretty crazy. Uh, this is probably one of the craziest videos I've ever put on this channel. Here it is. Okay, I'm back downtown. I was on Twitter and apparently a police car has been flipped over and burned. So things have escalated a little bit. Uh, it looks like nothing's really going on right now though. I'm a little confused. I have my wife with me. Stop. My wife. Stop. She decided she wanted to get out of the house and experience some of the excitement. So they flipped it in front of the Dunkin Donuts. Oh, okay. Which is right over yeah, here. Yeah. Oh, there we go. There we go. Mm-hmm. Okay, I'm running out there. I just showed up. This was a police car, right? Yeah. Trying to get any glass in my eyes today. How's it going? Good, how are you? Good, man. This is crazy. Yeah, I was not expecting this today. Yeah. I was here earlier and it was like, you know, they spray painted. I was here I when they were spray painting. And then it's like, I'm, I'm at home. Then I look on Twitter. All of a sudden, this is happening. It's crazy. Hi, guys. I am back downtown, Salt Lake City. I saw on Twitter that a car had been flipped and burned. And um, I'm taking, you know, documenting. And I just wanted to go live for just a second to show you guys 
what what's happening right now in Salt Lake City. It's pretty crazy. Yeah, they, they flipped this car. They just busted out these windows at this uh, train stop. Busted out those windows. And now they're down there. They just finished busting out those windows and the whole thing's moving down that way. Okay. So things have gotten pretty serious. Uh, they just looted this gas station, broke the windows. This guy's... Yeah, fuck. You fucking clown. Yeah, okay. You are part of the clown, bitch. You 
Just showed up. All right, cool man. I, I appreciate what you're doing. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I, I disagree with all of this. Yeah. I can't say I agree or disagree. Yeah. I don't know how I feel. Yeah. But okay. Yeah. Criminalization of this is not the right way. Yeah. It's not the destruction, the, the terror and stuff is not the right way. Mm -hmm. It's not. Yeah. And it's just, you know, these people have worked their entire lives to. To make this work, you know. Oh, I'm sorry. I came down here barehanded and with my ID in my pocket. That's it. I don't know what the hell I was about to do myself in. <laughs> I, I even got a bandana. I was gonna practice social distancing, but that went out the drain real quick. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I think they're closed, brother. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Just stay stuck here. It just hurts me. Yeah, fuck, man. Is the other guy your friend? No, no, no. There was a few. Once I stepped in and started yelling, uh, four or five cats stepped in to, to kind of watch my back, and so I can't be more grateful for that. At least I know I'm not alone. Thank you for showing up. I appreciate you, man. I gotta go take some photos. <laughs> oh man. attention to if I that way. Maybe we're just gonna go that way and then that way. Did you see milk? Yeah there's like three people with milk. Yeah that's that's for tear gas. The police response at this point is pretty overwhelming. They're coming from both directions no, that not. way and that way or they were and now they're here. I just don't want you to get hit by something flying off the road. I was wondering why that rock Yeah, they're throwing me at the police car. I didn't know we had this many police here. It's bananas.
I intentionally saved one part of the protest for the end of the video so that I could sort of narrate what was going on because I think it needs some context. And that was the incident with the bow and arrow guy. So the story of bow and arrow man is he was sitting in the traffic that was backed up from the protest. He allegedly yelled, all lives matter. And I, I'm gonna guess that the protesters were also taunting him as well. And I don't know what order those sequence of things happened. But um, we ended up with a man who ended up pulling a bow and arrow out of his car and pointing it at protesters. Now, at the very beginning of this incident, we were actually about 30 feet away from this guy, me and Christina. And I heard him yell to one of the protesters, I will stab you. And then he went around to the back of his car and leaned in. At this point, I, I told Christina, let's go. Come on. Now, Christina saw something black coming out of the car and said that he has a gun. Uh, so at that point, we assumed that he may have had a gun. So we stayed away for quite some time and the chaos ensued. And then we realized we, we, saw, we saw a car flip and smoke. We didn't know what was going on. We later learned things got a little bizarre. <laughs> I'm now going to reference footage from a live stream that was shared on Instagram by this guy. I will link to that live stream if you want to watch the full thing. Uh, I believe the incident happens around 40 minutes or so. He, he had been live streaming for um, quite a while during the protest. At one point in the live stream, he's standing near the front line where the police and the protesters meet. Uh, a girl makes her way towards one of the police officers, I believe tells the police officer that he has a bow and arrow, that's my guess. And then another guy says, he, this guy has a bow and arrow. The guy uh, doing the live stream makes his way towards the guy with the bow and arrow to capture what was going on, which thank you because you got some insane footage. We see bow and arrow man pointing his bow and arrow at the protesters and waving it different directions. And then I, I'm not sure what happened here, but it looks as if he released the arrow as somebody was running towards him. Meanwhile, everybody is saying, we need to get this guy. And then everybody jumped on him and, and started punching him and hitting him with things. <laughs> then we see the police push in. They retrieve this guy, pull him away. And then the protesters started attacking his car. They flipped his car. They caught it on fire. The guy survived. He got a lot of cuts and bruises. I've seen that he's facing, facing some charges, uh, but it, th that was bananas. Okay, for the most part during these protests, I have dedicated my energy towards just documenting them, giving you guys information and letting... Uh, you guys make decisions about how you feel about all of it. But I do want to share some thoughts on the protests. I support a passionate, peaceful protest. <laughs> it's a lot of peace to deal with community issues. I support, uh, I support a passionate online response as well. People who have platforms using that platform to talk about these issues. I think that the officers in the George Floyd case were out of line, and I think we need this discussion. I do not, however, support violence and destruction. The thing about violence and destruction in protest is it makes people pay attention. It does. We can't deny that. If you look at a lot of the things that are happening around the country in terms of re reforms, and changes being made to policies, things of that sort, whether you agree with them or not, all of this um, plays a role in that happening. But the problem is that it also activates the mob in an outsized way. What happens is innocent people lose property, and more importantly, they get hurt or killed. And I can give you plenty of examples from this uprising alone of that happening. But also, um, there is a, a wonderful documentary on Netflix about the 92 riots in L.A., and you will learn about that there as well. I would encourage you to check it out. Don't watch it before bed. <laughs> it's, 
pretty intense. Yes. Pretty intense. Yeah. You may not physically hurt anybody. You may just break a window in your anger, but what you're doing is you're activating the, the mob snowball. I've Mob mentality is real and it's dangerous. I've seen it. We need more calm conversations with everyone, including police. Now, a lot of people have had negative uh, experiences with police officers, but I found that when I speak to most police officers, they, they tend to be kind and they tend to listen. Uh, me and Christina actually spoke with a couple when we were leaving the protest that evening. Sorry that you have to deal with all this. It's kind of... It is what it is. Yeah. Just be safe. Alright, thank you. Okay. You guys now? Yeah, we're out of here. We're about to go get some dinner at home. <laughs> yeah, we'll be, just as long as you don't arrest us after the curfew, know, we'll come right? back. And, yeah. I think you can't paint all police officers with the same brush. We need more empathy and we need more perspective. And those things can come through conversation, very thoughtful, calm, intentional conversation. We also need more research. Uh, these are very complex issues and they take time to understand and they should be treated as such. Now, the last thing I wanted to speak about for a moment was um, covering the faces of protesters. I have received many messages asking me to cover the faces of the protesters that I've taken photos of. Um, and I've seen people do this as well. Their argument is that these photos and videos are being used to target the protesters for arrest. Now, I've spent a lot of time thinking about this because this is an important issue. I, I don't think that we should um, deal with it lightly. My response is I pursue a journalistic integrity that doesn't allow for that. It's the same reason that I don't remove trash cans from st daily street photos. And it's also the same reason, Christina just brought this up, I thought it was an interesting point, that I don't Photoshop blowtorches in the hands of protesters. I want to document reality. My job as a photographer is to report that reality and not manipulate or censor that so that people have the information and they can make the right decisions. And I won't give any ground to censorship. It's too important for a free and healthy society. And also, I'm not here to protect protesters from arrest. I'm here to document. But with that said, and I, I feel the most like Philip DeFranco that I have in my life at this moment. But with that said, I'd love to hear your thoughts. <laughs> Please feel free to comment below. Um, and your questions are welcome as well. That is it for this one. Uh, if you like and subscribe because you want to support what I'm up to here, I would really appreciate that. I appreciate you guys. I hope you have a lovely day. Be well.